Welcome, my name is Tom Antos and in this video I want to show you my new favorite microphone which is the Rode NTG4 Plus. Uh, this is a, a shotgun directional microphone uh, so it's used more for film uh, production, you know, or video production where you just want to capture sound in a certain direction. It's very directional, meaning whatever you point the microphone, that's more, that's pretty much where it's going to capture all the sound, not too much from the, from the side or from, from behind. Uh, the, my, my previous, you know, favorite microphone was actually also from Rode, that was the Rode NTG2 microphone. Uh, and I've used it on, on pretty much all of my productions. So if you've watched some of my films, like for example, Dinner Date, uh, which you can see on my website, uh, or, or you know, anything pretty much that I've done uh, about a year ago, uh, those were all, all the sound on those films was done all using the Rode NTG2. So it's definitely a very capable and, and a really good shotgun microphone. Uh, here's a few just quick examples of the sound that I was able to get using that microphone. Jake is down. Copy. You know what to do. Roger that. And here's that same scene now using the just the internal microphone and the camera. Jake is down. Copy. You know what to do. Roger that. And again, here, here's just a different scene from another film. Hey, we ain't got that bear repellent, but you know what works even better? Singing. Seriously. You're up for a walk in the woods, you want to sing loud and proud, scare all the animals away. Especially your singing. And again, this is the same scene, but now we're using the internal microphone in the camera. Hey, we ain't got that bear repellent, but you know what works even better? Singing. Seriously. You know, for a walk in the woods, you want to sing loud and proud, scare all the animals away. Especially your singing. So as you guys could hear, uh, you know, the Rode NTG2 is definitely capable of, of capturing really good quality sounds. And like I said, that was my go-to mic for, for many years. Uh, until I had a chance to start using this one. This is a new, a fairly new microphone. It was released by, by Rode. It's an it's a Austra Australian company that specializes in, in, in microphones. Um, and what's, what's really cool about this microphone is that it's, you know, aside from just being able to capture even clearer, you know, e even better quality sound, you know, over the, the NTG2, uh, the, the, so the really cool improvement over this is that it has a built-in lithium uh, battery. So you, you no longer need to uh, rely on having a phantom power. Uh, if you don't know what that is, phantom power basically supplies power to the microphone. So, you know, Rode NTG2, for example, just like, you know, most of the microphones out there require uh, some kind of power in order to be able to capture the, the audio. So, uh, for example, if I'm using it with my, uh, my Zoom recorder here, uh, you know, most recorders, just like the Zoom one, will be able to output phantom power. I guess the only drawback is, is that it then it, it draws a little bit more power from, the, from your recorder. So let's say you wanted to connect this microphone directly to your camera, for example, uh, that do doesn't supply phantom power, then you don't have to worry. You can just, you know, charge up the internal lithium battery and then power, power the microphone on and you're going to have sound. Uh, this internal battery is pretty amazing because not only is it so small that it doesn't really add that much to the length or, or the size of the microphone, but it's going to power the microphone for up to 150 hours. So definitely more than, 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 than enough for any production. Uh, to, to charge the, the microphone here, uh, we have the XLR connection right in between there. You have a, a micro USB connection. Just plug, the plug, in, pl plug that into uh, any micro USB cable, like the one that comes with your cell phones. Or for example, if you're on location, uh, I've done a video about these portable USB batteries that come in really handy, like I said, for many other devices. And those are the ones that are, I'll usually use if, if, for example, I forgot to charge my microphone. So I can just plug in one of these USB batteries and, uh, like I said, and just charge it up quickly. Um, these batteries is the, the one from uh, Kocher. Uh, this one is retails on Amazon right now for just $18. Uh, and you can also find it on a few other places. Uh, and the same thing goes for the microphone or all the equipment that I'm going to show you in this video. If you guys are interested in where you can find the best deals, whether it's Amazon, eBay, maybe BH Photo, uh, check all the links uh, are going to be in the description of this video. So just look below or you can always go to my website at tomantosfilms.com. Uh, some of the other features that this microphone has is a, is a high pass filter and a high frequency boost. Uh, built right into the microphone, so it's really cool in case, like I said, you wanted to plug it in directly to your camera, uh, you know, that does, doesn't have those kind of options. If you're plugging into, into like, like I said, like let's say a zoom recorder or any other portable recorder, most of them will have those options in there, but uh, it's cool to just have it there right on the, on the microphone. 
Uh, now the quality of the microphone, you know, which is the most important. Uh, if you guys just want to sort of hear for yourself, and I had a chance actually to use this microphone on the last uh, documentary that I worked on, and uh, just here's a, here's a few examples of just the kind of audio that you, you'll be able to capture with this. During the warm months, I live on a boat during the warm months. May, June, July, August, September, October. This is why God created the Caribbean, for old white people who get cold. You, you, can, do, uh, you can do certain things to make your life quite comfortable and uh, yeah, you do have to get uh, used to a confined spot. You, the spaces, yeah, you have to live within that con confine. So that was the audio that was captured on the Rode NTG4 Plus microphone. And now I'm going to play the same scene, but with the uh, audio from the internal camera microphone. During the warm months. I live on a boat during the warm months. May, June, July, August, September, October. This is why God created the Caribbean. For old white people who get cold. You, you, can do, uh, you can do certain things to make your life quite comfortable and uh, yeah. You do have to get uh, used to a confined spot. You, the spaces, yeah, you have to live within that con confine. Uh, now this microphone comes with a few accessories. Uh, the biggest ones here is just uh, the, the mount here, which allows you to mount the, the microphone to, let's say, to a boom pole, or using an adapter, you can put it on the hatch to mount of your camera. Also comes with this foam uh, windshield, which you can just slip right over your microphone. And uh, that will obviously reduce the, the wind noise. And uh, now, if you're actually gonna be using this microphone in a, in a kind of a more serious you know, video or film production, then I would definitely recommend that you don't just use the microphone alone like this. To get really good quality audio out of these microphones, uh, like you've seen in, in, in some of the behind the scenes that I've shown uh, on the last documentary that I worked on, you definitely wanna have a, a, like a shock mount and a, and a blimp uh, around the microphone to make sure that, you know, if you're, for example, shaking the microphone, all those vibrations are not heard. And the same thing if the wind, for example, hits the microphone uh, so that all the, the noise from the wind is going to be reduced. And so my favorite blimp to use is also from Rode. Uh, this, is, this is the blimp right here. So this is going to protect you from, like I said, from any wind noise. Uh, and, and also it has a you know really nice shock mount in there. So here, let me open it up. You can kind of unscrew the, the front and the back here. And then you can loosen these things here on the bottom and that allows you to basically slide this thing completely out. And then here is the, the microphone mount. Now, obviously this will work with, with any shotgun microphone, uh, you know, including the, like I said, the, the, the Rode uh, NTG4 Plus. So we'll just kind of slide it into here through the mount. Now, one thing you'll notice up here is that the shock mount, you know, like I said, it, it uh, takes away any of the, the vibrations kind of, you know, or noise associated with vibrations. But what's cool about it is that it doesn't use any of those little like rubber bands that most shock mounts use, which if you've ever used them, you'll know just how annoying it is because if one of them snaps or falls off, it's always a hassle putting it back in. Well, this one doesn't use it, yet it works amazingly well. There's, there is definitely no sound if you're just kind of shaking it up here. Um, it also, it allows you to kind of balance the microphone more on, on your handle. You can kind of move this back and forth and then you can, you have little like measurements up here so you can remember your settings. Uh, and like I said, just if you want to have a good shock mount, you can use the, the microphone like this. But definitely if you're outside and you're going to have, you know, a little bit of wind and you want to put the, the blimp right over it. So let's just slide it on top of here and tighten this. That will hold the boom blimp in place, and then here you have this little connection for the cable. The back, put the front here quickly, and there's your blimp. And you know, for example, if you want, you can just plug in right here. You have the XLR connection. You can plug that into your, like I said, your camera or to your uh, recorder, and you can definitely just use it like this. So you know, if you don't need to have the microphone really far. You know, let's say hanging all over your shot, uh, you can just have the, the, your audio guy just hold it, hold the microphone right here by the, the handle. It has a nice kind of uh, handle with this uh, soft padding on it. Uh, you can also adjust the angle here, just you know, just the way that it's pointing while you're holding it. So you can point it any of these directions. And so you like the angle, you just lock it in place. Um, and then another thing, for example, is if you're outside and you have a lot of wind, 
uh, definitely you want to put uh, you know something else up here which is you know usually it's called a dead cat I know it's kind of a weird name uh, but it's basically this big furry thing that I'm sure you guys have seen uh, and it, this this blimp comes with this so here's the the dead cat that you put over it I'm just kind of slide it over here and then once you have it over what I, what I like about this dead cat is that it just has this one kind of strap up here you just pull that and it tightens it and Voila, it's it's gonna be nicely protected microphone. So with this setup, even if you're outside and you know you have just direct wind hitting the microphone, you're not gonna hear any of that wind. And this was especially crucial when I was filming this documentary, which was about sailboats. And you know we were I, I, a lot of times we were just out over the water, and we were just getting you know we obviously sailboats need a lot of wind to sail. So obviously there was a lot of wind, like I said, hitting the microphone. But again with this. With this, uh, you know, blimp and with the dead cat on it, the audio had, you know, there was no problems with uh, with the wind. Uh, if you guys want to hear, there's another example right here. We had lived in Peterborough for quite a while, and I'd had a boat on Lake Ontario for quite a few years at that point, and we decided to move here. So we came down here. We spent a summer on this boat, and then we bought a house, and we had the house for a while, and. We kind of went from, well, what do we need the house for? We can live on the boat. And that's pretty much how we got to this point. Um, I worked in the factory. I was on the floor. He was my boss. Yes. <laughs> and we got married. And then we found out that our factory was closing and I wanted to go back to school. So I went back to college and we moved with my mother to the port of Newcastle. And here's how the same shot now sounds with the built-in microphone on the camera. I had a boat in Lake Ontario for quite a few years at that point. We decided to move here. Now definitely if you want to use this microphone you know in a, in a film where many of the times you're gonna to have to have it sort of further out you know over your talent uh, then you're gonna need a, a boom pole for it. My favorite boom pole is, is again from Rode. Uh, this one extends up to 10 feet. It's a five section boom pole. Just loosen these rings and allows you to extend it. So 10 feet is definitely more than enough uh, for any film production. Uh, what's cool about it is that it has, uh, it allows you to internally feed the XLR cable, which minimizes some of the noise with the, you know, associated with the cable kind of flying around. Uh, and it has, you know, the sort of a foam grip up here. Uh, and overall, it's just a, it's a light boom pole. So it's light, but it's, it's very sturdy. So uh, really great. And it, you know, at the same time, like I said, it's, it's a five section boom pole and it really allows you to, to sort of fold it to a pretty compact size as you guys see up here. Now, how would I use this whole sort of setup, you know, when I'm, when I'm out on location and, and like I said, uh, let's say I just have one person, you know, doing the sound. Well, here, I'll, let me just show you guys how I kind of put it all together. So usually I'll take my, my blimp here and I'll just kind of thread it here on, on the on the boom pole. So sort of rotate it like that. Uh, the boom pole uses an industry standard 3 eighths of an inch uh, thread. Uh, so once you have it in there, you're going to connect the XLR cable here to the bottom of the handle. And then, you know, that, that now means that the microphone is connected. Like I said, goes the, the, the cable goes through the handle and then up here and goes through the whole boom pole. And I guess you can see, I have it coming out at the end of the boom pole. And then I have a lot of like excess cable. Definitely, you, know, you don't need as much of, uh, uh, as this. Uh, but you know, uh, the reason why I have so much cable is because if you extend the boom pole up to 10 feet, then like I said, this way I still have extra cable. And this way, as you can see, I can just have my sound guy sort of holding it up here. And the cable, the, the excess cable just kind of hangs it down here and it's not in the way. Uh, now, uh, how would you connect this now to a recorder? And uh, you know, and also so just so it's comfortable to use, I use the Zoom H5 uh, recorder. Uh, but this, you know, pretty much will apply to any recorder that, that you prefer to use. This is the one that I find is has amazing audio quality, and you know, the Zoom H6 also works great, or the Zoom H4n is pretty good. This has slightly better quality. I just find that it's this kind of nice, you know, mid mid price kind of a recorder that allows has a lot of cool functions in it, uh, which I've reviewed this recorder in another video. So if you guys more have one more information about it, make sure to check out that video. Now, you know, a, a big problem that I know at the beginning when I was sort of trying to figure out how to do sound 
was just sort of like what to do with this recorder because obviously if you have one guy doing audio he's going to be holding the boom pole and he doesn't really you know doesn't have anywhere you know unless he has a third arm growing out of his back or something he's not able to hold that recorder and you know not only that but be able to change the settings on it uh, one way of doing it is, you know, which I've seen some people doing it and, and I've done it in the past is to attach a little lanyard and kind of have it hanging off of your, of your neck, uh, which works. Problem with that is it's, again, you have the, uh, the recorder kind of bouncing around sometimes. Also, it might be hard to seeing the levels on it. And then if you want to, let's say, p take a break and put this whole thing down, then, then you also have to, you know, take the, the zoom recorder off because it's, it's going to be attached with the XLR cable to this, to the microphone. So what I found best way to do it is to use this little um, articulated arm, which is actually this one's just meant, meant for uh, mounting, uh, uh, you know, monitors, uh, and this little clamp. You can get this on Amazon or eBay. Again, for all the links, check the description uh, of this video or go to my website. Uh, anyways, what I do is I basically put this little clamp over the boom pole, tighten it, and then here, as you can see, where instead of attaching the monitor. Since this is, you know, a quarter inch thread, standard kind of thread that you would use, you know, on your tripod or, or, or you know, on, on your monitors. And it's the same kind of thread that comes on the Zoom H5 recorder or the H6 or, or H4n. And so I just kind of thread it over here. And once I have it in place, then now I can just plug the, here the other end of the XLR cable. Now, what's great about this whole setup is, as you, as you can see, it's all sort of self-contained. So I can have one person comfortably holding the boom, uh, you know, adjusting the audio levels. You can also see what the levels, you know, the, what the audio is that's coming in. Uh, he doesn't have to worry about, you know, this thing being, you know, kind of dangling on his neck or having it, the recorder in his packet. And one person, like I said, can comfortably operate this whole thing. And then, you know, when he's done, he can just put it away, take a break. You know, he doesn't have to detach any cables. It's all sort of, like I said, all attached into as one piece. And then again, ready for another taking and just take it. And again, he's very quickly ready to go. So that's sort of my preferred setup for, for you know, for these kind of more independent kind of film productions. Obviously, in a bigger budget film, you might have several guys doing the audio. So you might, you might have a few boom operators and then you might have one guy who's doing all the mix, mixing and mix boards and all that stuff. But like I said, for an indie production where you're just gonna have one microphone, maybe a few, I don't know, lav mics, you can again connect them to, the, to your uh, recorder up here. But it's kind of nice to have it all attached together and it's, everything's kind of attached to this, this boom pole. So definitely if you guys want, you know, uh, looking for a, a, a f an affordable, but also a, a very sort of handy and very comfortable way of recording good quality audio, I would recommend uh, the, the Rode boom pole. Uh, the Rode, you know, blimp uh, with with the dead cat, and also the Rode NTG4 microphone, and also you know the Zoom H5n recorder. If you guys are looking for an affordable but good quality uh, portable recorder, uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about is just quickly the the prices of all these things. So the Rode boom pole that's going to cost around $150 as of uh, right now. Uh, the blimp with the shock mount handle and the dead cat that is $300, and the Rode NTG4 microphone is going to cost you around $400. Anyways, I hope this video will answer some of the questions when it comes to, you know, uh, how to capture good quality audio for your next film or, or video production. Uh, if you guys want more information about each of the items or uh, if, for example, if you guys want to see some of the other uh, equipment reviews that I have or exclusive filmmaking tutorials, you can find all of that and a lot more on my website, which is tomatosfilms.com. Uh, thank you guys and I'll see you next time.